Cher infographiste, bienvenue. Non, c'est en anglais, Rudy. No, 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 in English, please. Dear CG thinkers, welcome. It was the last straw, the final frustration. You know that unpleasant feeling you get when you're super motivated after finding inspiration, and then you suddenly hit an unsolvable problem. And while I'm browsing an um, art station looking for a model to recreate, I come across this image. I decide to replicate it. Everything was going well until I hit a small detail that seems insignificant. It ended up triggering weeks of work and resulting in this new update. That small detail is this one. No matter how I looked at the problem, it was just impossible with the current tools. So we're rolled up our sleeves and today I present you a 100 non-destructive tool that allows you to break the limit of editable hard surface modeling on cylinders. In the add-ons by menu, you will find a new button. Just a quick reminder, tooltips are not just for decoration, so it's always good to read them, as it helps avoid asking unnecessary questions. At first, it behaves like a regular cylinder, nothing special during creation. In the available adjustments, you will find things you already know, like adjusting the radius, height, resolution, bevels, and something called thickness, but I will get back to that later. And now the magic happens. If you select the cylinder and ask to make a cut, the cylinder unfolds. And when you're done with your cut and exit the add-on, the cylinder automatically folds back. If you want to make a cut without unfolding the cylinder, press the F key to toggle between states. This cylinder, which is entirely non-destructive, is easier to compute and may cause slowdowns. Therefore, it's highly recommended to make edits with the cylinder unfolded. When editing a Boolean object affecting a cylinder, press F to unfold and fold it back. You can do more than just a simple cylinder. You can create a custom profile. To do this, enter Edit Mode and add faces. The only requirement is that the top and bottom faces must remain vertical. Note that after this customization, you won't be able to adjust the height of the object via the circular menu. Now, it's time to return to the thickness adjustment I left hanging earlier. This allows you to create a hollow object by choosing the wall thickness. The circular menu offers two buttons. The first, full wall switches between a solid object and a hollow one. The second, straight follow, allows you to choose between a straight wall or one that follows the shape of the object. It quickly became obvious that one case would be uh, problematic, and that case is this one. What happens if I add matter to the edges of the object 
that are supposed to meet at the back. Well, <laughs> it doesn't go well. To fix this very ugly result, you will find the solution in the Tools tooltip. Press Ctrl while clicking on the button. This additional option corrects this scenario. It adds extra calculations, which is why I made it optional to avoid unnecessary burdening objects that don't need it. I improved the tool by automatically pre-selecting faces that seems to need correction. At first, nothing changes. You can merge problematic vertices if necessary, then choose the object that has the correct normals. But now a face preselection is offered. You can modify it if necessary or just press enter. Wonderful, isn't it? Do you, do you feel that sense of satisfaction? I will admit um, I was pretty prude the first time I made an object like this without any shading problems. The array tool also had its fair share of modifications, again due to the new folded cylinder tool. I need to position things much more precisely, and that's why the new system works like this. The colored dot represents the position of the last repeated item. When you click on it, you directly move the last item. The intermediate colored dot allows you to adjust the position of the first repetition. This system provides more precise positioning and avoids cursor, cursor issues where it goes off screen. Here's what the viewport of a particularly advanced and brave user looks like. One who embarked on a huge project. He is Workslab on Discord and I would like to take this opportunity to thank him for his involvement in testing beta versions. Anyway, the problem is that the non-destructive workflow in this kind of case can quickly make your viewport incredibly hard to understand. So I developed a tool that lets you navigate through the Boolean objects affecting an object. To use it, select an object, press the F key and click on the little button. Then hold, uh, hold shift and scroll the mouse wheel to cycle through the Boolean objects. Bonus you can choose the order in which the booleans are cycled. By default, it's in the chronological orders of creation. But you can press the X key for the X axis, Y for the Y axis, etc. The keys are displayed on screen. And the icing on the cake? In French, we said uh, the cherry on the cake. When you found your object, left click to go straight to editing. After 13 years of loyal service, my screen finally gave out. I had to switch to a 4K monitor and well, uh, I realized it's not great. So in the preferences, I added a UE factor setting. This adjusts the size of the icons, cursor sensitivity, and the size of dots on screen. I set it to 2 for a 4K screen. Once again, for a good add-on, there's nothing like a creator who uses their own add-on. Fluent enters a new era, five years after its creation, still faithful to its original spirit, non-destructive, constant workflow, and no junk add-ons. Thanks to everyone for your support, new add-ons are in the works, and in fact, uh, they are already finished, I just need to launch them. 
Anyway, we will meet again soon for new adventures in Blender. Bye bye.